I'm back and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take your videos from this to this in a matter of minutes. Okay, so how did I make my shot not only sharper, more detailed, cleaner, but also higher resolution? I did it with this program called Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI. And at this point, this video might be sounding like an ad, but it isn't. I was not paid to make this video for Topaz Labs. Up until yesterday, I was actually going to create this video with no affiliate link because I believe in this software so much and wanna see all filmmakers succeed that I was going to create this video for fun. But they did accept my affiliate application and if you decide to purchase with this link below, I do get some portion of sale. No clue how much. I honestly really don't care if you don't use my link. I just don't want you to miss out on the software. All right, the rant's over. I've been using this program for over a year now and I'm completely blown away with what it can do. Every time I've ran into a problem with the shot or I'm feeling, let's just toss the shot in and see what the software can do, I'm always shocked on the final result. The software is one of the best softwares I've used in a very long time. There's a fly in my face. I'm gonna now walk you through a bunch of different setups and scenarios and how you can use this software and make your videos that much better. But make sure to stay to the end because I'll teach you my tips and custom settings that I use on the software so you can get results just like me. And I'll even put my comparison clips in a Google Drive link below so you can inspect them for yourselves. And if you're enjoying this kind of content, I create a bunch of videos just like this. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and learn even more. I can't speak. It's okay. So the first shot that I showed you is originally shot in 1080p at 300 frames. We got this shot on my Ursa Pro G2, which is capable of shooting 300 frames at 1080p cropped. The issue though, is this image comes out typically pretty soft and has quite a bit of noise and a loss of details. This software completely gets rid of that issue and it's been my go-to for all my videos now. Where this software really strives though, is with severely damaged footage. Let's say you don't have a lot of light or you can't use a lot of light because the product you are shooting doesn't emit much light. Let's take this shot of this lighter again at 300 frames, meaning I need a crap ton of light to capture this, run it through the software and get this here. Not only is it night and day of a difference, but we took a 1080p shot and now made it 4K. Now here we are shooting a shot with the Canon R5 using the probe lens. The before shot is softer and noisier. And now look at it after running it through the software. You can use it on product shots that are perfectly fine just to give the extra pop of sharpness to the product and text while leaving everything else alone. Or maybe you have a static shot that you wanna create movement in post, but don't want to degrade the quality. This shot here was shot in 1080 and was run through the software to make it 8K. I can zoom all the way in and pull back, making the shot so much more dynamic without losing quality. You can even take old videos or finished videos like this engagement shoot and make them so much sharper, cleaner, and a higher resolution. And even one of the cooler things is you can take drone footage that typically has a lot of noise and also not so much sharpness in your shots and then make it this much better. And the crazy thing about this is this is only one of the programs I'm using in the video enhanced software. There's so many other things you can do like slow down your footage and even add more frames to your footage. Because I like to be transparent, there are a few drawbacks with this software. Well, really just one, you need a bit of processing power in your computer or otherwise it can take a while to do larger videos. I'm running this on my 2018 iMac and the way I counteract the issue is by processing shorter clips and or for longer clips, running them overnight. Typical render times for me for any clips are anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Now let's dive into my editing process and I'll show you my exact settings that I use. All right guys, now we're gonna dive into the editing portion of how to use Video Enhance AI. I'm in Premiere Pro right now. You don't have to be in Premiere Pro. You can be using any editing software that you like. And I'm gonna show you guys this shot. This is a shot after I've color graded it. As you can see, there's quite a bit of noise and we're gonna fix that up really simply we're gonna press Command M to export, and we're gonna make sure that we're on QuickTime, and then we're gonna to go to ProRes 422 HQ, and the reason for that is so we don't lose any quality. This is the best export setting that I've found, so you can maximize your export when using it in Topaz Labs. Next, I'm gonna create a folder in my tutorial, and I'm gonna call it Fixes, and I think this is the easiest way I like to edit one clip at a time in the Video Enhance AI. I'm just gonna name it Paint Fix, and let's make sure, let's export it. All right, so once the shot is exported, I'm gonna click on Topaz Video Enhance AI right down here, and their user interface is super simple. We're gonna click on Browse, 
we're gonna go find our clip under Big Bertha right here and then go to Topaz Tut. We're gonna go to Fixes and we're gonna click on Paint Fix. We're gonna open this up. And again, there's so many different settings that you guys can use in here. You can do slow motion. There's tons of different things, but we're gonna use Proteus Fine Tune version three. This is the one that I use for pretty much everything and make sure that you're updated to the latest version, but if you're just downloading it, then you should be fine. So version three Proteus Fine Tool, Fine Tune. So down here, you can see I'm clicking on the scrubber and we can select a certain point. You can use auto, but I like to make my settings a certain amount. So first we'll start with revert conversion and I like to keep it between 10 to 15. And then the recover detail is gonna be less than the sharpen. And I like to keep it around 33. Sharpen, you have to be very careful with. You wanna make sure that you make your image sharper, but don't do it too much. Otherwise you're gonna get jaggies all over the video and it's gonna be noticeable in your movement. So I like to keep it around the 40, 50, 60 range. You can play around with it and we can preview it later. Next, we're gonna do reduce noise. And the really cool thing about reduce noise is you can crank that all the way up to 100 and you're not gonna see a lot of softness in your image. So if you have really bad noise, crank it all the way up, but we're gonna keep it around the 80 range right now. 86 is gonna be great. And then we're gonna go down to D-Halo and I like to keep that a little bit under 10. And then last, I was kind of messing around with this, but we're gonna keep this around five. Perfect, all right, so the next thing we can do is like I said, we have our scrubber right there. We can click preview and then this will just show us the image that we can see a preview of it before we actually go to it. And this looks amazing. So I can zoom in and zoom out and just check it out and look at the difference between the two. It's pretty astonishing what this can do. And you can just go down to stop and you can see the difference between the two playing back at regular speed. All right, so now we have this in 4K, but we can make it into 8K. Um, you can do 8K and you can really push it. I think 4K is pretty good for everything, but like I said in the tutorial, it's possible to do 4K. And then make sure you do ProRes 422 high quality, fast. And then we're gonna name this and we're gonna create a folder named Fixed right in our Fixes folder. And then just click on that and then change it to Fixed. And then save video, start processing. And then once it's done, like I said, it's 15 to 20 minutes. Once it's done, I just bring it right back into Premiere. And there you go, that's the best way to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Again, I don't promote things that I don't believe in or that I don't use. So I really think this software takes the cake. You should definitely get it, whether it's from me or you just get it on the website. Please like, share, subscribe, and until next time,